I'm here once again drinking the milky sweet and smooth lights of Nescafe Gold with my buddy Pharaoh. How are you doing on this fine Thursday afternoon, Pharaoh? Yes, yeah, good. Thank you very much. I've got I myself. I've got a delicious homemade smoothie to uh, take me take me through the rest of the day. Lovely, a smoothie. That's nice. Um, so we're gathered here today. Pharaoh to talk about World War II propaganda after mm. having been through women's lib and World War One. Um uh but did you know that I almost caused World War Three earlier on today? <laughs> I did see um a, a Twitter storm around a certain topic, yes. Yeah, I uh I happened to tweet I mean I, I might as well might, might as well share it with you. Uh yeah. Um let me just see if I can find it. Uh, here we go. We were meant to have Panama Hat on, by the way. Uh, he may still join us, but uh, he is somewhat AWOL. He has caused confusion and delay. Um, so you'll have to uh, excuse us for being a little bit late. But here we go. Here's the. Here's what caused all the problems. This may seem an odd question, but why don't January and March give their extra day to February so they each have 30. I mean, it occurred to me, January's 31, uh, March is 31, February's 28. They'd, it could be 30, 30, 30 if they just redistributed their days a little bit. And uh, this has caused, you know, I was accused of being a French revolutionary. <laughs> Many people called me Rosebier. Um, you know, all, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of aggression came from that. I mean, this, I mean, this, you can see I had 78 likes, but I think I was ratioed in the end. And I'm not <laughs> ratioed very often. So, um, you know, what, what are your views on this uh, on this matter? Well, you know, I, for one, I'm a fan of the kind of organic um, calendar that we've built up. You know, names from different places and w weird numbers. You know, I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, you've got to remember that, obviously, with the leap year, your plan falls down because every once in every four years it becomes uneven again. You know, if, if you want that kind of sad uh, total total symmetry, yeah, go go to the, the, the French revolutionary calendar, which is one of the worst things ever created in the history of humanity. Why, why is it 31, 28, 31, though? What sort of nincompoop uh, came up with that? Uh, I, be, I bet it's all based on, like, lunar cycles or something, I, I always assumed. But I, I don't really – I'm not into uh, – Astronomy I mean, this came from a this came from a late night disagreement between me and Mrs. A about how many weeks that how many days there are in the year, and uh, I can't remember. I was clear. We we forgot which way round it is. Is three hundred and sixty five days in the year? Yeah, three sixty five point two five technically, and then we just leap add on. Th is leap year three six six? Is that right? Yeah, but but every single year you've you've technically got that extra half a, a quarter of a day though. It still happens, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I, that then, mate, I was th then trying to calculate the days in the year. It's, it's like in bed at like two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then it occurred to me, like, what is the nonsense of 31, 28, 31? Um, also, we were talking about how awful that rhyme is, you know, 30 days hath September. Or is it? Uh, April, May and November. April, May, and event, but no, it's June. No, <laughs> June's got three. <laughs> I can't even get it right. <laughs> I, and this, I don't is, and this is what we were. Okay, then it, you know, this is the sort of nonsense you chat about two in the morning. Um, yeah. What is that rhyme? Starting like midway through the year. <laughs> it's very and, confusing. And, and, and then Probably it's basically more confusing like, then. It's it's very specific in the first half, and then it's like everything else is thirty-one. That, that's it's such a cop out uh, cop out rhyme. That is the worst rhyme of all time. Oh, uh, are you still with me, uh, there, Pharaoh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I'm getting um, yeah. Oh, my uh, my buddy Morcar has been in the in the, in the chat, by the way, uh, Pharaoh, and um, lots of people like uh, you know, he's not me. He's a he's a friend of mine who started up a kind of gaming channel. He's been just been mainly playing Street Fighter so far. Um, and I just thought, you know, I, I give him the occasional signal boost. Um, so, uh, yeah, subscribe to Morkar if you're, uh, if you're interested in that. 
Um, although I'm told he's going to switch from Street Fighter to ZX Spectrum games in the next week. So <laughs> got that to look forward to. Um, all right. So shall we get shall we get on with? Um, oh yes, and entropy is open uh, for the people who like to use entropy to do their super chats. Um, that's down in the show notes. If you if you scroll all the way down, it's the last link is entropy uh, for those people who want it. Um, okay, so let's get going then with the propaganda. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen. Um, you can see that. And shall it's we start? Canada. Shall we start with America and move to England again, like we did before? Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. Mainly so we can say that the British propaganda was superior. I don't know if that's actually <laughs> going to be true this time around. But, um, uh, it's, I don't think it is. Um, stop him. <laughs> and the job's done. I mean, Dr. Doctor Zeus wouldn't get away with this, would he? <laughs> well, uh, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, we often think about um, the Axis having these kind of like racial stereotypes or uh, degrading images of uh different ethnicities but the americans against the japanese are pretty pretty savage I, I always think this isn't even the worst one this was this is relatively mild but you've got this kind of like heavily squinting grimacing um uh japanese guy um staring uh you know pointing a gun directly at you um i, I guess this is kind of like, this is after the kind of um you know ve 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 day and the kind of second uh, you know, part of the war or whatever. So it's literally the job's almost finished. You just got to kill, kill the Japs, and then uh, the job's done. Yeah, I mean, this is what um, this is always of interest to me. I'm always interested when the system, by which I mean the the American, uh, well, I could call it the Anglo-American cathedral. I guess we could call it, or the uh, you know the powers that be, give plebeians permission to be racist essentially and um this is what i see world war ii japanese propaganda is kind of well we need you to we need you to go and die for us in the fields mm. so um we're gonna lean heavily on the old uh, on the old xenophobia and racism <laughs> because yeah. that that will get you going um just as they did of course in the you know in the in the gulf war you know, they leaned in. You know, there are times when the system leans into certain things when they want a certain outcome. Um, they needed to get people up for this war in World War Two. I mean, one of the things people forget about the American, the American point of view of World War Two is that most Americans wanted nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, World War One was not very, very popular, and uh, you know, Wilson uh, got America involved. Um, I think the, one of the reasons for America's lateness into the war was because FDR had to, had to convince the nation that, you know, it was worth doing because most mm. normal normal Americans didn't want to be involved. Um, I mean, I don't think that's just uh, kind of propaganda from the Mises Institute. That's literally the truth, isn't it? Yeah. And again, that you know, the eth ethnically wise, ethnically speaking, the Americans have a high percentage of Germans. Um, you know, so again, it's kind of like you having you 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 you're in a, a fight to the death against um, you know people that you know you, you would have known and loved previously. So it must have been very tough for a large proportion of the population, I think. So um, yeah, and uh, you know, the Japanese front of the war. Um, now I don't know. We always think of the war from from the British point of view as a as a primarily against the Germans, right? Where mm -hmm. where I feel like in America, the Japanese angle of the war was bigger, and like yeah. the aftermath of it, the cultural memory of it is much more against, not more against, but equally against Japan as it was mm -hmm. against the Germans. Whereas for us, it was it was always the Germans, right? Yes, it's interesting because obviously we actually had a huge number of eastern provinces, but we basically got curb stomped by the Jam by the Japs pretty quickly. Like um, you know, obviously Singapore, that was just hu humiliating. Just how quickly we lost, and I, I think it just showed the state of the empire um, that a, a pretty well, a pretty poorly armed force managed to sweep through the east and and 
you know, I think we were lucky not to lose India, basically, at, at that point. But um, I guess culturally wise, again, Americans came in through Pearl Harbor. I think I think it's just, again, part of the mythology, isn't it? You know, they brought us into the war. Um, you know, the, the the whole kind of um, A-bomb and the occupation of Japan afterwards is yeah, much more in the consciousness. It's also in the kind of culture. I mean, you know, I, I, I mention a lot. I watch, um, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. Uh, as you know and just in the commentary you know gorilla monsoon was like oh lucky pearl harbored him you know there was a, there was a lot of <laughs> references to um you know japanese villains in wrestling mr fuji people will remember yeah um one of the funny things about japanese wrestling villains is that they're all hawaiian <laughs> <laughs> uh, like mr fuji was hawaiian for example so yeah very few japanese wrestlers in america are actually japanese uh, which is ironic because um, Japan is a great wrestling nation as well. Mm. Um, there's a lot of great Japanese wrestlers, but they tended to stay in Japan. Um, anyway, let's uh, let us. Um, and when they did come over, it was always a bit bit weird. Uh, Giant Barber had a few runs, um, it, you know, early on. Okay, so let's um, let's move on from there. What do we make of this actual? Yeah, well, propaganda itself. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty pretty weak. Again, I think it's just its purpose is just to dehuman dehumanize, turn the Japanese into the other, build up. Um, you know, the, it's it's all about building up disgust for other people. I, I always think this dehumanization efforts from both the a allies and the Axis side. So, um, I, I'm personally not a fan of this at all because, again, you got to think about you know you have to deal with these people after the war. So, what happens when you <laughs> totally dehumanize them and then you know what's the reaction going to be afterwards you know it's it's a yeah. uh, it's, it's short short termism but it's very it is it is effective at the same time but that this, this is this is you end up getting like people you know doing like literal literal war crimes against japanese civilians and stuff like that isn't it so i can see uh owain in the chat mentioning yokozuna he was polynesian as well mm. like literally none of them are japanese um I'm trying to think of an actual japanese an actual Japanese wrestler who turned up. Um, I mean, the great, um, the great Muta was Japanese. He was genuinely Japanese. Um, Antonio, Antonio Inoki, when he, when he faced uh, Muhammad Ali, he, he was Japanese. Uh, trying, to, trying to make any, um, and yet, you know, now that I mentioned this, um, people don't think about the cultural memory on the other side. And, um, you know, in uh, in Japanese pro wrestling, uh, Pharaoh, all the villains, like the Americans were villains over there because they, you know, they still remember the war. Mm. So it's kind of like it kind of worked both ways. Um, that's a little that's a little avenue that I may explore on Cigar Stream in the coming uh, in the coming weeks and months. What happened in Japan after the war? Uh, because that was a fairly traditional culture, wasn't it? That essentially yeah, get, true, get another place that was bombed into liberalism yeah exactly like check out the, the meiji period it's uh it's fascinating in terms of like culturally how they adapt because um all of a sudden they go from um again basically living a feudal life to uh, the, the industrial revolution ha happening but um the, the the japanese produce this kind of weird and beautiful mix of um industrial items but still with like all the handcrafted expertise of the, of the japanese so so actually in many ways they uh i think adapt quite well to that first opening up pretty well but i think the, the post second world war they lose a lot culturally you got to think i think the americanization really begins in a big way i tell you who was jack actually japanese mr sato <laughs> he was a fantastic wrestler uh he actually tagged with mr fuji back in the old wwf days in madison square garden um he was actually japanese um i'm not sure about professor tanaka the old uh 70s guy feels like he wouldn't be but mr mr sato was actually a member of the uh japanese Olymp olympic squad at one at one point um as was Yatsu, the great Yatsu. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Um, um, I think Panama's in the the room. If you want to let him in, is he? I don't see him. He's not there, Pharaoh. Okay. Okay, sorry, he's mm -hmm. getting his laptop. He said he's he's almost he's almost there. Apologies. 
Okay. Um, so do the job he left behind. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think I this is like interesting. That. Well, it's, it's interesting because basically this is the beginning of all progressivism. When you start to see a lot of these American ads, the the ideas of the you know the empowered woman, the uh, woman in the workplace, you know, women taking up the slack from the men, all of those ideas come from this propaganda. And and I I think the question you, you need to ask yourself is what happened to the propagandists after World War II and where do they go? And you know, a lot of them end up in advertising, a lot of them end up in government departments and um, you know, the propaganda never stops, let's just say, um, after the war. But um, it's interesting, you know, like what, one of the feminist icons is, you know, Rosie the Riveter and, um, you know, the the kind of strong, powerful women of the Second World War. And quote, in quotes, all of those ideas are generated by, by this propaganda campaign. Um, Sorry yeah. to keep on going back to rest. I can't, can't, can't <laughs> let it go. Someone in the chat is talking about Tojo uh, Yamamoto. He was a he was a guy who had a career down in um well he worked the territories and he later became you know I guess people these days might know him from world class when he was a manager not really Japanese he was Hawaiian for a fact I know that so uh, yeah most almost almost every <laughs> Japanese wrestler from the from the territories days apart from Mr Sota will be will be Hawaiian secretly. Um, apart from if you any Florida fans, Pac Song, I think, was Korean. So anyway, carry on, Pharaoh. So um, yeah, I mean, I don't like the way this seems to be pitting men against women already. He mm. it's like talking behind his back, you know. I think it's a bit yeah, and, and and again it's like left behind. It sounds like he's just like walked out on the <laughs> work walked out on the job as opposed to risking his life for the safety of his <laughs> civilization. So so, uh, so yeah. Oh, there's there's Panama hat. Hello, Panama. Uh, good afternoon, chaps. Uh, <laughs> I, I apologise sincerely for my lateness, uh, but you must remember one is one is half African. So uh, occasionally you uh, have caused confusion and delay. Yes, again, Panama hat. <clears throat> don't don't brick me in the tunnel, there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've we've just been talking a little bit how the the Americans weren't really that up for being it. Like when I say the Americans, I mean the American public weren't really that up for being in the World War Two. So the propaganda effort was actually needed. They needed to persuade people, like you know, why do we have to go and fight and die for effectively nothing, something that's got nothing to do with us. Um, so um, you'd agree that the propaganda effort was uh, was re was required, and it, I've also said it's an instance where, it, again, it's where the system gives people like permission to be a uh, permission, quote unquote, to be racist because you're, you know, they're asking you to die for them essentially. So, you know, let's let's ramp up, let's dehumanize the Japanese for a while because we need you to, you need, we mm. need you to fight them now. Which, mm -hmm. which is uh which is interesting in, in fact the more the more pre world war 2 history i've read um the more it's obvious they've been at this game for a very long time the uh the kind of let's just say conglomerate of governments uh between london washington um and uh various financial institutions let's just say oh yes they've been at this sort of game for a good while because um don't forget in britain like there wasn't that much will to be part of world war ii in britain more no but certainly not still, the amount we thought there was well, I mean, Chir well, churchill famously was a kind of had to had to kind of bulldoze his way through against uh much opposition um uh which is a kind of so it's now told as a hero narrative. Um, yes. A few weeks ago, um, YouTube was very, very eager for me to watch a uh, Hoover Institution um, interview with uh, you know somebody who's written another Churchill biography, and um, it came on autoplay. You know, sometimes you end up like accidentally watching a Jordan Peterson lecture or something. <laughs> um, 
and um, it came on, and he mentioned something. He said, "Yeah, there's been you know, 197 Churchill biographies, and I'm the 198th." Um, so there's a there's a deep mythology built around kind of you know the figure of Churchill and the heroism mm -hmm. of World War Two, and it just it's just kind of interesting. Um, just kind of interesting when you consider the self destruction that caused from the British point of view. You know, well, um, I mean. Yeah. I was talking about this with somebody quite literally this morning, um, and we were mentioning how uh, World War II was such a kind of human tragedy, just on a sheer numbers scale, that they didn't want to repeat this mistake they made with World with World War One of not having a clearly defined goal or reason for it. So, it's why, for example, the Nazis are seen as you know the, the, these are the most evil people that ever lived. The, you know the, 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 these were the new benchmark for evil in the world, and that's why we had to go and fight them. You know, and it's it's why they why they created sort of the World War Two mythos around the sort of the, the, the narrative there, which which we didn't have in the First World War, and which caused a lot of um, problems, obviously, because you know what did all those millions of people die for? Um, and when when people have that mindset, they're willing to try some very uh, shall we say, unorthodox methods of uh, changing the systems they're a part of, which obviously after World War II, if, if you think about it, after, after World War I, li liberalism was weakened. After World War II, li liberalism was, was at its strongest. Strengthened, yeah. And it, if, mm -hmm. in fact, I discovered, because, um, you know, I'm reading things all the time, I discovered some very interesting elements to the dissolution of the British Empire as well. Um in terms of specific people in specific leadership positions, um, you know, in, in India, for example, um, they had a they had a, a problem where um, I think they wrote a report saying, "Oh, oh there's an issue here. Ninety five percent of ninety uh, five percent of people uh, living there are kind of happy to live under British rule, and um, this is an issue because, like." You know, there were there were five percent of agitators. Let's just say, um, and you can you can clearly see elements in the British leadership. I'll just put it that way: uh, working to agitate, to ferment the radicals, if you want to put it that way. Um, mm. And then, um, and then, in you know, in the Indian case, sowing uh, multi uh, multi ethnic divisions. Which uh, you know then has the catas the catastrophic uh, effect of the partition in ni in nineteen forty seven, mm. which is uh, no another terrible event in history, really, um, and and then created um, new regimes that were kind of actively hostile to um, you know I'm thinking of Pakistan in particular, mm. um, actively hostile to let's just say British interests, but not necessarily to the interests of the people that we that we're talking about so mm -hmm. there's a lot of hidden history in and around this area that um i keep finding out, out about all the time and the more the more i've read about it the more it kind of makes sense uh once you know certain things <laughs> mm. yeah so uh so let's um let us uh move on there so yeah and you can see in this uh, image here the seeds of it what what's so frustrating um what looking at some of these images is the is the fact that it's obvious manipulation right it's mm -hmm. like well we need you to do this now so we're going to we're going to spin the narrative this way because we need you to do it um it's kind of it it is horrible it's like the mass you know the mass man all the time being manipulated by <laughs> dark elites Mm. There's just just That's one last it. thing before we move on. Is the, yeah. the it, there is something iconic about it as well? You can see her face is lit up. She's almost like heavenly and beautiful, you know, and beautiful. And uh, again, it, it's kind of like there is like like religious undertones to it. I, I I think you know just kind of the the religion of um you know construction and being part of the the you know what's going to be the consumer system basically. Also, I mean, it's yeah. it's sort of a I think as you sort of were hinting at a it, it's a reversal of everything that that 
that uh, women were up, up to this point, you know, even even though they'd obviously uh, done this sort of thing in the First World War Two, this was where it became ir- sort of ir- irreversible. You know, this this is it's now women's place to be in the in, in the factories alongside men making things and, and not not big be, not being at home anymore. Um, you know, you can see you can see how much um, the foundations of the current system rest in uh world world war two and the, the the world wars and and how how much it changed the fabric of the society yeah. this is this is why panama i lost so much patience like when when i was trying to uh discuss the boomer truth regime i just couldn't i had a very limited patience with the people who weren't understanding that um and um if you remember around that time I was like, you know, why are you why are you blaming the boomers? I'm like, just, just shut up and uh, try to understand what I'm talking about here because mm-hmm. it is it is a kind of ground zero. Uh, 1945. It's like it, there's a very obvious effort to um, de-emphasize prior history or to make pr- history before World War II seem like the very distant past. Um, and I and I think it's been very effective because the cultural memory doesn't seem to extend uh, much further back. And, you know, one of the things that used to wind me up as a music fan, and I've discussed this before, was the way in which the 1960s is treated as kind of like the birth of music, you know. So that any effort to go before, like you're just encouraged to think, well, there was nothing, nothing before like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, apart from like boring club crooners. You now everybody was Frank Sinatra before then. And that's it. No, no prior music. Um, and mm-hmm. I feel like that that effect is across the whole culture mm-hmm. where it's like, you're not encouraged to delve much further back. And if you are, the past must be denigrated, you know, in the way that, yeah. in the way that, uh, 1381 john smith is denigrated so must you denigrate you know every other bit of history up until you get to this moment essentially i mean i um i uh, wrote a, a piece not long ago where i can i i said that um 1945 was liberalism putting everybody in check and then 1991 when the soviet union collapsed was the checkmate because you know it it went to massive industrialized warism and and uh, various ideologies that, that that were standing against that sort of order. Um, and then, of course, it 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 didn't have to go to war with the with its with its other enemy, this, um, this the Soviet communists. Um, that that simply collapsed on its own, you know, years years later. So you know that. And then now we're at a point where, you know, aside from a couple of sort of tin pot, you know, like you, you got sort of the the meme of uh, of, 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 of Korea, um, there isn't really an opposition to it. I mean, I, I, I don't see China as being, say, a real enemy of li- liberalism. It's it's kind of a progenitor no, of liberalism more, of a different you see, it, it It's funny because if you go back and read stuff from the 50s and 60s and 70s, it was a kind of open secret that uh, Washington and Moscow were not the mortal enemies than you imagine, right? Um, it's like, um, you know, you take the FBI, right? The FBI are were meant to believe are kind of ruthlessly efficient when it comes to attacking anyone. Um, let's just say, let's just pretend there was a rogue mid-century German in 1967. Uh, the FBI would be like ruthlessly, murderously efficient when it comes to dealing with him. But when it comes to dealing with like communist spies, they're a kind of kamikaze joke, you know almost like a kind of clown outfit when it comes to dealing with communist aversion. And, it, you know, it was ever thus. Um, so one of the things that happened in 1991 is that the, almost like the false flag of the, of the commies was taken away because now, now they had to, now they had to kind of own the fact that the, the, the true source of uh, what we call left wing subversion today was Washington, not Moscow. Mm-hmm. It's just something that I've, I've you know, because it was always convenient for, um, you know, we mentioned the Hoover Institution. It was convenient for them to point to Moscow. Oh, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's them. Oh, they're the real enemy. 
Um, they're the ones who are causing all of this. And in a way, it's, since 1991, they've had to own the fact that that's not really the case. And, um, you know, to the extent that China plays the same role as Moscow, there's there's not even the pretense of that anymore. It's like, well, they're obviously kind of on the same side. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Um, let's uh, let's carry on then. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I will say it's not it's not that straightforward with the with the with the Moscow question because um, uh, many people think Stalin kind of went rogue on his own uh, after a certain amount of time and mm-hmm. he was no longer controllable. Let's just say. Um, so th- there is that. So th- there are question marks around around that. Uh, so let's um, have a look then at this. Uh, don't let that shadow touch them. Buy war bonds. Oh, look, they're at it again with the war bonds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> worked <laughs> worked to money. World War One. Why not do it again? Well, I think it's interesting about this is again it's the um, you know psychologizing of symbology. You know, we, again, Panama talked about this. Is this was built up to be, um, you know, the ultimate evil. And, you know, the the, the symbol of the swastika um, here, e- even its shadow falling upon your children, is, it's kind of like um, an earthly spirit or shade that will steal the life of your children if it even touches them. And again, I think, I think it's no, no wonder that the power of that symbology, you know, exists t- today and, you know, everyone says you're a not you know being called a nazi is the worst thing <laughs> in that you can be you know yeah what is the um what are they going for is is this a kind of reference to the uh original like you know discoverers of america or like what's the this is obviously like a naval theme with this guy here i think it's, yeah i think it's more simple i i think it's literally just um you know, here are some children playing outside, and they're about to get m- murdered by a swastika. <laughs> I think. I think with this one, it is literally like the the, the symbolism is very direct. It, it it could be that they're sort of representing the different forces. You know, the guy with the hat is the infantry, and the guy with the plane is the. You know, it's kind of reminiscent to that, but I think it's pretty pretty obvious this this uh this poster. Yeah. Um, careless talk got there first. What's this? So, so this, this is kind of like one, one of the big issues, obviously, is information leaking out. And again, I think Second World War, alongside, I, th- I think after First World War, people recognised the power of propaganda, but also information and, and information control. And so a lot of effort was spent on making sure that people didn't blab about uh, manoeuvres they're going on, um, and you know, like um, where, where they're off to next, and so obviously we, we see here a paratrooper regiment um, murdered even before they got to the ground because someone's told where they're about to land, basically. So careless t- talk got there before the soldiers and murdered them. So it's pretty pretty brutal. I mean, the 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 thing about this poster is it it does kind of have a a hard truth to it. I mean, I would suggest anybody who's interested read into the history of um, intelligence in the Second World War. Um, like, just even regardless of what we think about the people that were that were uh, participating in it, the the story of 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 how information was passed and leaked around was was fascinating. Um, and like it, this this scenario was technically sort of this 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 could happen. You know, if one careless person working on a base told told someone who, who they thought was their friend about where the troops were going to land and then it turns out that friend is like part of a big uh, spy network and they can relay that you know back to the germans in what like you know a couple of hours and then the entire attack is ruined that sort of thing you see that as a symptom of uh you know growing up in the most depraved time of all time I'm just reminded of the McDonald's advert from the from the early nineties. Do you remember? <laughs> McNuggets away. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? There was a there was a McNuggets there was a McDo- there was a McDonald's advert where the McNuggets were soldiers parachuting down. And um uh I did this you know, so 
just reminds me of it. Um, but now that I think of it, it was probably the other way, you know. I think that McNuggets Away advert was probably referencing wartime propaganda. Um, so, oh, dear. oh yeah, this is this is a famous <laughs> one. This is still used, isn't it? This one. Yeah, literally, um, in the hipster part of London that I live, people literally put this woman in their on their windows um, with like some kind of COVID message and stuff. But this is what I'm yeah. saying. This is what I'm saying about the um, these like liberal and progressive icons are created at this point and and the same messages the same slogans are used from this point so like i said the propaganda never stops yeah um and it's like each one of the narratives that was set up in 1945 has to you know has to be taken to its logical end point and conclusion mm. um but that's that's a really good point because yeah. this is basically like, in in some ways that the like feminism because because again this is the the, the 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 woman who's had her role inverted from the kind of traditional um you know housewife she's she's wearing she's wearing the the outfit of you know the the man the uniform of the man but also the the reference to the muscles is interesting because again that's showing the kind of power and might and physical prowess of the man has also been subverted by, by the woman. So there's an egalitarian message to it. There's even more so than that. It's that like third wave feminism message of you know power over men, put men in cages. You know you don't need you don't need a man with this powerful strong woman. Uh, what's interesting is that this same message is uh, weaponized across the attack of vectors of the progressive stack, isn't it? It's like well. You know, first it's women against men, then it's like black people against white people, and you know each one of them is is weaponized in this way, and it has the same underlying logic. Um, and they they're all in motion at the moment. Every single one of them is in is in a, like a collision course to God knows where. Um, and that that that's another thing that really interests me. Uh, the more I've read about this, and I, I'm talking about stuff written in the 40s and the 50s and the and the 60s, where all of this stuff was discussed, but was seen as being kind of lunatic at the time, um, and yet we've ended up literally with the things they were talking about uh, back then being mainstream, being kind of like part of everyday politics. Um, so I I do wonder where I I do I just find it interesting that. The origins of it are are meant to be um, something for like the, you know self defense or something for the defense of a way of life or whatever. That's how it was sold. But I actually wonder whether it was uh, always designed as a kind of you know, as you talked about Panama, the checkmate of liberalism on the entire world. Well, I mean, it's a very effective way to change the mindset of an entire. Uh, hemisphere of women, you know, um, never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, interesting kind of trajectories to follow is, as, as I was saying, what happens um, in each of those independence movements when the British Empire dissolves? And who are the actors involved in those agitating? And then what propaganda techniques are used on those populations to get them behind, you know, let's say Gandhi or whoever? Because the idea that they're all just organic is not true. Uh, spoilers. Um, and it, 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 feel, it feels to me that the all of this that we're seeing here was the, I guess, like the dry run, like the, the banner case. The, the prototype which is then rolled out again and again and again across different populations um you know around the world uh until until you get to the point where now we have america bombing syria because anybody know what's assad done like why are we bombing syria anyone it, no? insert, man bad. yeah well it's just insert generic terrorist thing happening 
It's just all it's just all rubbish. Come on now, AA. You mustn't you mustn't be a Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> oh, well, don't no, don't appease right. the dictators, AA. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's uh let's carry on. Um responsibility and character, US Army. Yeah, I, I put this is. in there because because this is just like so different to the kind of advertising you see today for uh like both the UK and the US uh, Army, you know, just even mentioning responsibility as a um, a worthwhile um, and an important facet of, uh, you know, being a man and being, uh, you know, ha- having as part of a job and also character. You know, it's not even about necessarily like strength or bravery. It's about, um, you know, take responsibility responsibility for your actions and, being this again hero- heroic feature, so I, I really liked this as a um, as a notion, and again, just shows how far we've gone. Mm-hmm. I, no, I think no, this is no, quite let's just pretend. Sorry. Let's just pretend, though, Pharaoh, that um, um, you know my tweet d- does trigger the next world war. You know the the, um, the great war over the calendar is fought. Okay, let's just pretend. Um, I think very quickly you'd see all of the nonsense go away and you'd see stuff like this come back because now you're asking people to go out and fight and die um so if there was if there was ever a return to a war that required most of the population you'd see a change in the messaging i i I believe but um i could be wrong i mean what's the messaging around the pandemic being like save the nhs there was a yeah thank you nhs save your god it's it's interesting. They they do use the language of heroism, don't they? Actually, but it's a different kind of kind of heroism, where again it's not. And again, yeah, I guess you could say again it's responsibility that. Um, so, so, yeah, maybe there is maybe there's truth truth to that. I, I think there is a, a really interesting questions about do, does like are are people shaped by the propaganda or is it a combination of both or is it the other way around to you know to people shape the propaganda and obviously you know that these guys are trying to get them to you know show these characteristics but but can you make a responsible person from a poster i'm i'm not sure uh, I, I think something like this is to appeal to a certain kind of person if you did if you did this today about uh, you know character um and and like sent it out to again generation z or or below it w- it wouldn't resonate with many people at all because they just wouldn't understand the notions behind it i think mm-hmm. also i mean it's 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 asking something of you it it's asking you to to join um the us army and kind of become a better person it's it's not saying you know Here's all the things you'll get if you join. It's just you know, here's some immaterial uh, um, virtues that you can apply. I like again. I'm I'm like it. W- it wouldn't really work nowadays, but but as you said, but I I do think it's for the time. It's quite a good poster um, for a certain type of character. And also, um, I was going to ask uh, Thero, Is there a particular reason why they all seem to have this shared kind of scheme of color? Um, with the kind of warm yellows and the and the and the greens and the blues, yeah. Like like again, it's all like I said, it's all down to um, the kind of um, artistic heritage that that, um, that the guys who are making the posters come from. So again, those German posters are very vivid because uh, of the German express, exp- expressionism. But this very much comes out of um, kind of more realist art. So again, it's like these very real, but idealized figures everything's soft and um with pastels um so it's it's more to do with the artists and creating that that sense of you know how like a company has a brand uh, I, I i think with the propaganda you need to sort of have a bit of a, a like an overall br- a brand for it to, to kind of feel yeah exactly and, and also so it feels like um you know it's it's all part of the, the same thing so i, I think they they just ended up with the kind of color scheme, and then everyone has to kind of stick with it, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I just wanted to mention on the um. Can you can you hear me, guys? Mm-hmm. Hello, you can hear me. Yeah? Hello, um, you can hear me. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I I just wanted to mention that uh, something made me think about character the other day, and that was um. Did you see like Meghan Markle has been accused of bullying by by staff at the palace, um. 
this has been like a kind of story that's been doing the rounds and um markle has reacted by uh you know what an extraordinary attack on my character uh she you know, called them racist disappointed, yeah. uh, disappointed to, 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 you know to have this attack on my character um I mean, does anybody for a second believe that uh, <laughs> Meghan Markle wasn't guilty of bullying? She obviously was. I mean, I never, I've never jumped to a conclusion as fast in my life as to believe that a, uh, you know, Markle is a bully. Um, yeah. But I, it just made me pause to think. Well, what does character mean when Meghan Markle says character? What does she really mean by that? Because what are they appealing to in the current? in the current year as aspects of good character and what is the ethical underpinning of it? What is the, you know, what is the kind of moral basis of um, it? Because really they have nothing to talk about apart from, uh, you know, are you prejudiced? Are you a racist? You know, that's not really character. That's a mm. stand in. That's not really morality, is it? It's a, it's a kind of nonsense. It's, it's kind of trying to make a, morality out of basic politeness which is not um not ethics yeah well well i, I think they're trying to create a virtue out of um because again it's not necessarily like being polite you know again it's, it's interesting how they phrase everything it's not about being not racist it's about being anti-racist and active effort to stop to stop racism if that makes sense so i, I feel like they're creating these active things one has to do to be seen as virtuous so i think you're right the sense of character has gone from this idea of responsibility integrity hero heroism to um basically be being seen to do specific things in society which are anti things that things that they don't like basically you know it, 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 something that would greatly help uh efforts in racial relations is if um is if people weren't given a reason to uh you know dislike the actions of certain groups you know which comes down to responsibility and character i mean it does or, um, it, i mean sorry. we mentioned Judaism, but how much of it comes down to like you know just clean your room and paint your bloody fence tidy your garden well, no, don't, like don't do those things. Don't do those things because then you can't consume the next fence or or buy the next garden. Don't 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 have a sort of sentimental attachment to anything. Eh? So, I I feel I feel like at the ground level that really it really does what it comes down to though is that is is groups of people not willing to you know not willing or able to maintain a certain standard in a certain area. People who on the ground get resentful of it. And then they're not allowed to they're not allowed to voice their resentment because um, you know reasons. So I do think responsibility and character are probably at the heart of many of our many of our issues. Um, so this one's been put in the bin. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Don't take chances with pickups. Loose women may be loaded with disease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this? What's this all about? Well, you know, after you know, we saw from the from the uh, First World War <laughs> posters the uh, the amorous nature of the the American uh, caused you know lots of problems regarding venereal disease. But you know, I, I love the uh, you know. So this is obviously just kind of like the the kind of uh, coquettish, winking woman at, at you know at you. You know, she's beautiful, but is she? as deadly as a loaded gun but then i love mm. there's like a v for victory and then there's like the vd for venereal disease as well it's 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 a pretty terrible poster but it's uh you know now, made me laugh. is this a is this an oblique reference to the well-known carryings on that happened when many american soldiers came to these shores and um shacked up with uh you know th there was many a cheat there was many a cheating wife in uh Mm, in yeah. in the in the forties, that was well known because their I husbands were away. Um, you've you've heard of that, right? You've heard of yeah. that. Uh... Um, it, it, it's also um, historically just when at any time an army is stationed anywhere in any country in any for any reason, uh, this this becomes a problem. Um, because you know hundreds of thousands of men sat sat around for months, you know, with nothing to do. Uh, they tend to uh, want to indulge in certain things, so. 
yeah, this this does become a problem. And I mean, uh, so, sorry to kind of uh, go off topic slightly, but just just because it's it's sort of uh, amusing on this point. Um, the German army occupying France in the war um, suffered very badly with this because the French actually organised brigades of women who were infected with all sorts of diseases to go out and seduce <laughs> German troops, and oh and God. and they managed to get a severe spread of uh, all sorts of horrible things through through the German camps by. Um, by by screwing them. <laughs> one of the, one of the interesting test cases I always remember reading about this. Uh, I don't remember where I read it now, but um, it was a kind of anth anthropological sociological study of uh, Captain Cook and his men. Um, what happened when they rocked up? And um, you know they believed uh, Cook was a god. You know, and um, it, it, they they had. Uh, whoever those natives were on those on those on those Cook Islands, um, all of the women basically just offered themselves to to Cook and his men. Um, so there is there is this kind of strange uh, phenomena that goes on where if women believe that the social status of the men coming in is above those of the of the kind of home troop, this will go on. So I, I do wonder if British women had kind of got had kind of figured out. Hold on, there's a new superpower here. You know, clearly, the Americans are are above our British lads now. We're we're gonna mm. we're gonna switch. Um, there is this. Uh, I don't know what they call it, but is it kind of like a an inbuilt disloyalty of the female, well, of female humans. It is. It is an old trope. Um, even going back to sort of classic literature and ancient myths, this idea of the women um, opening their legs for the invaders. Um, though I, I the what, what what to make of it, I'm not really sure. Um, also, yeah. I mean, the the Americans coming over to Britain, one thing that really drew, them, drew, drew the British women to the Americans more than anything else was the fact that after years of rationing and, and the depression and hunger and, and the lack of anything sort of luxurious, the Americans brought over material goods in abundance. You know, you could buy... You could get they, they brought over tons of clothes and chocolates and foods and alcohol you know all all, all these sort of uh, luxuries that people in britain had been missing uh and i think it was i think that played a very major role in the willingness of these uh w women to to uh give something back shall we say to the americans so um yeah i mean i i i, I do think there is something to um the that disloyalty kind of thing that uh, I was talking about. It's got something to do with survival, of course, as well, though. Because don't, don't forget, in different times, I mean, imagine uh, Genghis Khan and his crew are coming to town. You know, you've got you've got limited survival options if you're a woman in those sorts. Well, yeah, what are you, what, so, you going to do? <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it could be uh, could be a kind of fight, fight or flight thing as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's carry on. Someone talked. <laughs> Yeah, looks like I, Riot I really, from, this guy yeah. looks like Riot from Street Fighter. Anyway, <laughs> I, I really like this one, just artistically, because again, it's just kind of like it's a powerful message. You know, uh, again, it's black and white, so it really stands out to you. Uh, the, the pointing finger is going to attract the attention as you're walking by, and the, again, the eye gazing directly at you. So uh, it, again, it's really going for that shock tactic, but I think it's I think it's more effective than the previous one that we saw of the you know the. Uh, the, the the parachute uh, parachute regiment or should i say the chicken nuggets um you know i think this is a strong strong poster say so. mm. yeah good i feel like i feel like we're going to end up with a few memes of this one somehow it's <laughs> it's got it's, it's just got the, the it's it, it's the energy of the of the sailor you know being drowned in the middle of the dark sea you know pointing it pointing it not quite at you but it's somebody behind you. That's that's what's interesting. That's about true, it. actually. Is yeah, it, that's a good, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, they've, they've managed the perspective very well. It, it's he he could be pointing at you. He's sort of looking at you, and it's sort of that accusatory uh, thing. But he's not quite pointing at you. I like that. That should be a deeper slow meme. How did how did this new person get in? Someone talked. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we get raided. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's carry on. Um... help stop this by WSS and keep him out of America. National War Savings Committee. 
so again, this is more um, German de dehumanization. Again, the idea of the kind of German brute. You can see his hunched over shoulders. His arms and legs are too long for his body. He's holding a knife covered in the blood of his victims. You can't see his face, but you can see it's kind of ugly and uh, brutish. So again, just like the Japanese one we saw beforehand, the Americans were not afraid of totally dehumanizing their enemies. Is he wearing a World War One? That's a World War One uniform and helmet, isn't it? It's the, it's, it's the stereotype, yeah, of the the, the pickle halber wearing German. So they're still um, living off World War One propaganda here. Well, that's what I was going to bring up. Is if, imagine if you were somebody that lived your adult life through through two through the two wars, you'd be so sick of these posters saying, "Buy bonds, stop, stop the German brute," wouldn't you? Because like, like half the posters we've looked at, this this, this is the angle they go for. <laughs> it it must have worked because you know. This, is, this seems to be like the sort of the, the, the base level of propaganda poster. Have there been COVID bond, bonds yet? <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we, we should invent it. That's a good quick get quick rich scheme, yeah. By, by COVID bond, Rishi Sunak has bankrupted the nation <laughs> <laughs> because half the country's been on furlough for the past year or whatever. Um, it's interesting okay. he extended it. He's interesting he extended that to October. You know, I think I think it does show that they're going to go for a longer lockdown, personally. But anyway, let's not maybe uh, talk about yeah, that. Let's no, not don't, bring don't rank that. punditry into that. this. Rank punditry. Uh, okay. Soldiers without guns. There they are. Again, it's just like this is this is the same slogans that we'll see today at like a, a, those uh, feminist marches or whatever. You know, that, that these that women are modern day soldiers. I'm a, you know... Um, you know, I'm fight, fighting for freedom in the same way that these women are. It's interesting how, again, the idea is just so powerful that it survived for uh, over 70 years in the, in the consciousness of a nation. You see, I wonder whether if they tried anything like this today, it'd be difficult, wouldn't it, right? Because it, 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 one thing that strikes me about this poster is that there are obviously three, you know, they're three white women, right? Um, today, you'd have to make this poster, you know, politically correct. Mm. Um, but then would it connect with the people it needs to? And this is a genuine question I have. It's like, well, because you're asking people to do something. Okay, you're asking, you're trying to motivate and persuade. Does it lose its effectiveness when you're trying to hit, like... You know, you talk, you you know, you you do the marketing stuff, Pharaoh. You're trying to hit like four different demographic groups who don't really know each other in real life. Can you do it with one poster, or would they have to do like micro targeting today? Or yeah, like, yeah, like in the past, everyone was very similar. You know, again, if you look at the, do you remember those black and white photos we saw of the women coming out of the First World War factory? They're all wearing the same outfits. They all look very similar. Because we're living in the age of hyper individualism, um, you, ha you you can't you, you can't have a single message for everyone, and also because of yeah multiculturalism as well, you have to have a thousand me messages. For just for example, um, if you if you if you ever watch any kind of TV on demand, um, so that's like again uh, f for the Americans, apologies, but it's like a Channel Four, and you see any, any of their adverts. You, you can target by region. And so what you can do is to actually swap out the voiceover for different uh, areas. So again, you can have like a northern person speaking in the north, uh, a southerner for the south, et cetera. Um, so you, you're having to get that unique experience for each of those areas because th there aren't many things which keep us all together these days, sadly. You know, there isn't, again, m maybe it is the, the, the final thing, which is the mythology of, World War Two, you know, something like Churchill is a, is a true unifying message. And that's why I think they had to use the quote unquote blitz spirit for COVID, because that's one of the last true homogen like global like uh, global messages. Has worked though, hasn't it? Sadly. Yeah, but that's all they've got. You can't keep using it. This is the thing, is that this is what what else is there? What what else? holds us together as a as a nation you know in terms of um symbols and icons you can't have you know the three lions you can't have nelson Red, the rainbow flag I, well, mean, I, I certainly get a swell of pride when i see the uh, <laughs> rainbow flag you know sadiq khan he's a figure of unity isn't he 
Oh God! I mean, the, the other Joe problem Biden. is that when when I see you... Joe Biden, I swell with pride. My heart swells with the fact that we lived through an era, Pharaoh, where we've defeated fascism. Again, this was our World War Three. <laughs> I mean, and anyway, carry on. Yeah. But like, the other trouble is, of course, if you if you had to go around and convince modern Americans that they were going to fight for America. Like you, you'd basically be stuck. You'd have, you'd have all your regular sort of um, patriot types. But I mean, th who are they going to fight for? They're going to fight for Biden, you know. And, and and what's what's the name of that that woman um, that 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 he that that, that sort of controls him? Um, you know, the 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 the, the VP. Uh, uh, you know. Kamala Harris. Yeah, you, you're going to fight for her, you know. Is 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 this is this America? Are you, are you going to go and do that? Are you going to go and fight in the Middle East or whatever? You know, it's like, and and then of course you've got all the sort of uh, anti-American types and people, and all the sort of uh, all the sort of you know uh, racial minorities who who apparently uh, you know that well we we can't fight for America. It's it's a terrible racist system that keeps us down. You know, what, what, what are we going to fight for that for? So, you know, who would who who would join this this army that that, that you need to get together to, to do something nowadays? It, it, it may be an, it may be an issue for them, you know, because um, mm -hmm. you know that there was a question about the uh, they were starting to do purity tests in the army late last year, I, I recall. Um, yeah, but like you need the fighting men to be on side, of course. I mean, so, you know, uh, it's yeah. it's very progressive to put women on the front lines of of the army, but. But you know, there's there's a reason that we've avoided that for nearly two thousand years of, of, of human history, and, and even more, you know. Um, and and the other thing is, of course, you know, what percentage of America now is is obese or or <laughs> otherwise un, unfit to to fight wars or or you know to to, yeah. to, to handle that? You know, what are you, what are you going to do when? I mean, I suppose now it's less of a worry, of course, because they're the sort of for the time being they're still the hegemon, and their their ideology is is hegemonic, and they can sort of push push uh, power via other means but at some point you know war's going to come knocking isn't it and what the hell are they going to do yeah um now i hate to do this but uh do you ever play that game like shag marry uh what was it what's that what's the uh it's after marry one what's, what, what, what's the third one i think you have to kill one oh you know, who oh, would you marry who would you kill and who would you just uh have yeah. the one night stand with here yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mary, bottom left. She looks probably the most wholesome. She's wearing this kind of frumpy lace top. Probably a secretary. That's great. Can annotate my uh, thoughts and notes. And then kill the other two. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to. You have to. Uh, you have to have a one night stand on one of them. Very, oh, very high level content here today. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, all right. Fair enough. Um, let's uh, carry. I won't make you play it, Hat. Oh, um, thank you very much, AA. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just dump poor Pharaoh in that. <laughs> what about what, what? What about you? Don't know. I'm looking at her. Yeah, I was. I was uh, looking at her. I, I, I think maybe marry, marry the one in the middle, snog the one on the left, and uh, do away with the one on the right. <laughs> We're all agreed that she'd be trouble. Yeah. She's the one to get rid of. Yeah. Okay. Let's carry on. Now um, we all have VD. Yeah, indeed. We we uh yeah shouldn't should keep pitching with both hands, brother. Oh my god! <laughs> I, saw, I just saw this and it just made me. It's like that. This was the, the worst poster I found. My god! Oh, someone. Uh, that's pretty harsh. Keep pitching with both hands, brother. I mean, it's meant to be kind of like, uh, you know, just keep, you know, hang on in there. But I think they just totally misses the mark and it's just brutal. I mean, just look at his face. His face sums it up. If you can get a zo zoom in, it's kind of like, what are you doing by my bedside talking about baseball? My hands are literally blown off. <laughs> um, nothing what but a flesh message? wound. Just a, just a flesh wound. <laughs> I don't really. How is this encouraging people to to fight? You know, oh look at this man; his he's <laughs> hands blown off. This, this is the worst. This is the worst propaganda post. I'm reminded yeah. of that Monty Python uh, 
sketch where they um they visit the guy's tent. You know, they're they're in some colony in Africa, and the guy's <laughs> had his uh, leg bitten off by a tiger. He's a like, tiger oh, no, in I'll Africa. <laughs> Oh, but I'll be, I'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's pretty. But but what what is the like? How is this encouraging people? This is encouraging people to stay home. Surely, you know, don't go and lose your hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, they they totally missed the market. I think it's meant to be kind of like they're probably put up in the hospital, just kind of like you know, just keep hanging on there. But it's just it's just terrible. Horrible. Yeah, in, in the top you. right, it just says. U.S. official poster, U.S. Army <laughs> official poster. My, the first thing I thought when I saw this, would, if you if you used it today, everyone would go, "Well, how the hell am I supposed to scroll through Twitter if I lose my hands in the war? I'm not going to go fight for that," you know. <laughs> Dig for plenty, grow good in your garden, or get an allot allotment. Yeah, I mean, and this is just interesting comparing this to some of the the British ones. Because again, uh, uh, again, Britain destroys America in terms of pro like at home propaganda. But I mean, this is this is perfectly fine. You know, dig. You know, it's all about encouraging people to create vegetable patches in their garden, so that you're not having to rely on, um, you know, food that's going to be sent across to the soldiers. But again, it just doesn't quite work in terms of a picture. It's just a box full of veg, isn't it? Mm, I, I think it's quite good. I I I actually um uh to confess I I have a couple of these uh dig dig for victory style posters because I've always quite liked the idea of having a little veg garden. <laughs> it's just it's it's just kind of cool to me. I don't know. Be a good advert for a local harvest festival, perhaps. Yeah. Also, it's 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 very sort of uh trad in in a sense that that it's weirdly anti corporate. You know, in a sense, like it's not saying give your money, to, uh, you know, go and work in the factories or, or give give your money to the government to fight the war. It's saying just make your own food, which is which is wholesome. You know, it's it's it's, it's everybody should be doing that if, if they can, you know, uh, whether there's war or not, you know, make, have a little patch of vegetables or or do it, do a tiny bit of sort of I don't know farming. Just, just you know, it's just I like, it's, it's good. I like playing that game. Um, I've been playing a game re recently called Little Wood. But it's a bit like Stardew Valley, you know. Keep a nice little garden, grow some carrots, you know, peaceful. Um, I've been enjoying that. The, the the premise is that the the world's already been saved. It's an RPG, but uh, every you know everything's safe. All the monsters are gone. So now it's just time to build the village and you know grow grow some carrots and mine a little bit, chop chop some trees down. <laughs> I like I like those games. What do they call them? Crafting games, I guess. Um, anyway, let's carry on. Uh, oh what are you What are you going to do about it? Stay on the job until every murdering Jap is wiped out <laughs> again. I kind of Dogs. like this. I kind of like the energy here. <laughs> again, just I love the again the uh, depiction of the Japanese uh, guy as just this super buck tooth. Um, like just totally distorted, <laughs> distorted like mask of a face there, and again it's kind of like using, again it's um, dovetailing with the press as a propaganda tool. You know the press is releasing stuff about how you know stuff, you know the, the Japanese cruel uh, treatment of soldiers. But again, it's interesting how the again the government and the press working together for specific aims, and again, mm -hmm. this is and I do think the legacy, the legacy of this idea. That the Japanese are like underneath everything quite cruel has lived on. You know, I, I think you talk to someone long enough, you'd be like, Yeah, but you know, I mean, cruel in the war mind. You know? I would say objectively, the Japanese were particularly cruel, um, uh, out of all the countries that fought, fought that war. Um, uh, and I mean, uh, Pharaoh, I hope you've included some of the other um caricatures, uh, that the Americans put out of the, of the Japanese because they are they are. You know, worth looking at just for the sort of, I don't know, for the meme value, I suppose, just sort of how yeah, we, we, they are. We had one at the start. I think there may be one later as well. Yeah. That's good. I mean, just the, the kind of, I just like this is my favorite so far. Just, I think out of all the posters we've looked at, like in the entire series so far, this is it because it's just so like high energy. Like, it's like stay on the job until every murdering Jap is wiped out, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's tapping into a bit of old uh, friend 
friend, good, enemy, bad type mm-hmm. of territory, isn't it? Um, also, also, it's um, you know, uh, it's literally. I, I know that the whole thing about oh, you know, the the the, the press being the arbiters of truth, but. I think it is an effective poster because they've included that newspaper headline. People have probably already seen, you know, and it's like, look, this is this isn't this isn't this isn't just like a bit of propaganda. This is objective truth, you know. This this this, this is what they're doing, you know. M- dirty murdering Japs, go and kill them all, and like that is effective propaganda. I think I think this would get men queuing up at the recruiting station. Can someone clip clip that line, please, from Panama? There, that'd be great. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't Let's get me carry on. <laughs> Dr. Zeus has been cancelled for this sort of thing, I'm (laughs) saying. They've got the guts. Back them up with more metal. Yes, so so I quite like this one because, again, this is the... Like the, the, the Americans really ramp up the heroism in, in their posters. Again, think back to the First World War, where it's again, you know, it's, it's liberty with a sword fighting. And it, it was only that poster with the um, whatever the... the, the the kind of cavalry ghosts, if you remember, I thought that it was relatively hero- heroic. But there's quite a few of these quite good American uh, posters where, again, you've got this f- figure who's, again, another uh, paratrooper with a Tommy gun fire- firing. Got a, he's got a great powerful pose. And, you know, they've got the guts. Mm. It's these brave guys. And then the, the the call to action here is back them up with more metal. So, again, there's the metal of the gun, the metal of the bullets. Giving them metal is going to help them uh, do their job. So again, this is one of my more favourite uh, yeah. posters for me. I mean, frankly, if I had to look at another, uh, oh, here's some innocent woman and children. Go and go and give, give, give your money to the state. You know, please, please buy bonds. I, I would scream. You know, I'm so glad that we finally got some, you know, some propaganda with a capital P. You know, <laughs> you know, let's 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 do some fighting. You know, that that that's sort of thing. There's much, much more. Well, at least to me, it's much more res- res- responsive than uh, hand over your cash. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this reminds me of a of an Alex Ross DC DC Comics front cover. You know, something about the art style. It's kind of photorealistic. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows any Alex Alex Ross Ross artwork, but um, because it's, it's it's kind of that hyper real style, isn't it, in the in the art? So, uh, yep. Um, let's move on. Uh, salvage scrap to blast the gap. Occupy. <laughs> and then Is there's it- the American eagle, literally bombing, bombing the snake. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It gives again, like in terms of depictions of the Japanese, the snake, the buck two snake, is quite is one that's quite common. Again, if you try and zoom in on the the face of the snake. You can see the the teeth kind of poking out in front of it. So again, it, it's it's quite a clever uh, uh, it's sort, no, sort of like sneaky dehumanization again. They they, they retooled that from World War One. I. I remember that snake wearing affairs at one point. Do you remember? <laughs> that is the Ottoman snake. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, the Ottoman snake. Do you remember? Um, so there we go. Uh, what do you like? Do you like this one, Panama? Um, I, I, I do, um, doesn't quite have the same energy as the other ones, but I, 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 I do like it. Um, particularly, I, I love the depictions of the Japanese because they all have that, so the, the teeth, they tend to have glasses and the little hat. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a good iconography, I think. And it's rather unfortunate that the Japanese, uh, got their kind of aesthetics. So, so kind of. Uh, straight before the war because it made them very easy to very easy to, uh, to, to, to caricature you know you, you either have the sort of the the emperor or you have the kind of um, official with his little sort of um, wing collar and top hat and glasses and then, and then you have the kind of uh, troops you know with their uh, buck teeth and an evil face you know it's it's it did I think the Japanese unfortunately are just sort of too easy to caricature like that I feel, like, I, I feel like this could be memed this snake um I'd like to make uh, Mr. D memes out of it, and you could just change the, you could just change what that is. You know, you could have uh, you could change occupied territory with Panama hat, and have that as a Mr. D meme. <laughs> <I> reckon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to say anything about that. Bring him home sooner. Join the waves. You know, here yeah. we go. More of this. 
Yeah, well, I, th- I thought it was it was more. This is more of a sympathetic than again the you know he's he's going away. You need to fill his job. This is more about you know this heartfelt moment of goodbye. Again, this is all about memory. You know, this you you the, the poster is to the woman, right? And it's almost kind of like do you remember the time you said goodbye to your loved one as he went off to you know fight fight the Japs in the um, in, in the Pacific. Um, but now you can bring him home faster by jo- joining the waves. So again, I think it's really clever because it taps into those subconscious memories, but also the like a positive emotional thing, as opposed to the men have gone, you need to replace them. One of the stronger efforts, I reckon. This one's pretty good. Good, good message. Trad mm-hmm. message. I mean, clear, um, I, clearly though, I reckon they, even within America at that time, they probably had different demographic groups they were trying to get trying to target pharaoh yeah oh, definitely yeah i mean again america is a very segregated country in terms of like just in terms of where people live in terms of ghettoization uh, and it always has been so you need to to do that for sure hang on then let's have a look dishonest chin dishonest <laughs> i wonder i i wonder though she's been up to no good while he was while he's been away don't she trust them she reminds me of the sort of uh, Edwardian era um, Gibson girl a bit. Um, it's, yeah. it, it has a vibe of sort of being like an older style of poster, I think, although at least the art style is. Um, and I think it's quite clever the way they've turned the woman's face to the viewer so that it's sort of saying to all the women that are uh, missing their men, you know, this, this, this is you, this, this is you, the kind of beautiful, uh, pure, sad woman who's missing her man, but the man is turned away. So he he becomes the sort of every man that every woman is missing. If you see what I mean. So the, mm. the 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 target of the poster is individualized, but the kind of object of the poster is not not dehumanized, but de-individualized. I suppose it's um yeah. it's much more effective that way. I'm still not sure. I reckon she's been playing away. Uh, <laughs> let's carry on. <laughs> um, uh, she has VD. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at this! Look at this! <laughs> <laughs> This was an official uh, U.S. Army poster. <laughs> um, so, what do we uh, what do we make of that one? Uh, what, what I like about it, it, it there's a, there's a there's a sh- kind of a raw strength to it. It's just a raw br- a brutality. Oh, you're skipping ahead now. There we go. Oh, sorry, yeah. and, 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 I, and I like that it, he's just kind of like he's rolled up his sleeves. You can tell he's taken his jacket off. Uh, Uncle Sam's got the wrench, and he's going to beat the Japs <laughs> with the wrench. I love that. He's got a wrench. He hasn't got a gun or a sword or something. He's got a wrench. <laughs> Has anyone tried to like update this with uh, you know that being Joe Biden, Assad? You're <laughs> oh, next. Don't do it. You're don't, next. Do it. <laughs> don't even meme it. Um, I mean, the, is it just? I suppose Turnip would be able to explain this to us here. But but why is why is Uncle Sam always depicted as being an old fellow? What like why why is he Sort of because you'd think with America, the whole thing of them being, you know, sort of a, a, a young uh, country and all that, sort of. But Uncle Sam is always sort of quite sort of wizened. You know, is there any reason for that? Do you know? Yes, yeah, interesting. I mean, I, I don't think the Americans like to think of themselves as young, quote unquote. There's a there's an awful lot of uh, founding father worship and stuff in in American mythology. Liberal tradition, so, I suppose. Um. Yeah, like within their own, you know. Um, yeah, you're right about that. Though. I mean, I I think because. Oh, hello. I think he's gone. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, I said, let's face it. America is a bit of a made-up nation, isn't it? It's not real. It's not real. Yeah. Country. Um. So I do think that they've always had to lay on their their national mythology and mythos a bit thick, you know. So these emblems, these kind of uh, the likes of an Uncle Sam and, you know, uh, what is it, Lady Columbia? Um, Mother Columbia. Yeah. Or, uh, th- th- you know, they, they have to take their icons more seriously because otherwise they're just a kind of collection of ragamuffins, you know, on Native American soil. <laughs> right. Um, Right, uh, so you have to. They have to talk about these things much more. I mean, I, I don't know though. Maybe uh, I mean we'll see when we get to the British propaganda. Um, but I feel like the 
uh, the mythos is a bit thin uh, in the American case. So, you know, they have to make their figures a bit more grandiose. Um, that could could explain why he's an, why he's an older chap. I don't know. To give what's this? Bit of a bit of careless talk. Are the pieces uh, um, are pieced together by the enemy? Conde, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I sort of like this because it sort of reminds me of like the kind of mastermind style. You know, this could be the front of a of, of a of a jigsaw or a game, but obviously it's kind of like these kind of evil uh, connotations. I always like the kind of sinister Blofeld esque kind of gray gray mm-hmm. gray jacket and, and ring. You know, it's almost like he's part of some kind of secret organization. But then the fact he's a Nazi is revealed through the super obvious uh, ring. So I can't believe somebody is in the chat saying I want that ring. No, you don't. You don't want that <laughs> ring. <laughs> Uh, okay, yes, so I carry on. Booby trap, syphilis, and gonorrhea. So they they were really they were really onto this uh, <laughs> this uh, yep. don't play away business. She's been set up by this sneaky chap back here. See him? He's put her up to this. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, yeah, because I bet there was a lot of action for the American lands away as we were as we were talking about. Um, mm-hmm. but she could be a German spy, for all you know. He's a spy. Gone, but let's carry on. Uh, clear the way. The engine, the engineers of the United States Army, call yeah, for just, the engineers. I, I just really love this again for its kind of heroic uh, and epic nature. So you've got this kind of guy who's, um, you know, in this kind of power pose, almost like the Colossus of Ro- uh, Rhodes, um, high above these kind of tiny troops beneath him. And again, you can see the water represents the, the kind of their under artillery fire. He's got his like he's holding the entire rifle just in his left hand. He's got his entrenching tool that he's going to club someone to death with in a second. I, I just think it's a very uh, epic and inspiring poster. Um, uh, yeah, just pretty good. Yeah, I, um, I'm beginning to realize that this d- d- DC cover artist, Alex Ross, probably got his style from these World War Two posters because there is so it's so uncannily similar that i i've got to believe that he was inspired by exactly these posters um I, I, you know only this would be superman or something standing astride here mm. rather than a um yes yeah, so this one's quite good i mean there it, feel, it still feels to me that they're hitting many different types of people in the american public here um you know hoping to see what sticks um, mm-hmm. Anybody else getting sort of a Team Fortress Two vibes in this one? <laughs> well, I, I, I was, I, I did actually. My mind did go to um, different classes in computer games, you know, because an engineer is quite a specialized, uh, specialized military unit, isn't it? And mm-hmm. uh, there he is with his, with his hammer. So, also, um, just just the historical context. I mean, the the, the core of uh, of engineers in the war, uh, arguably, was like. If you if you imagine the U.S. with their kind of you know just sheer might of industry, you know the amount of it of, of tanks and trucks and guns they can make in a day that's just going to crush their enemies. You can't do that without um, mechanics and engineers. Um, and uh, there was an anecdote. I think it was um, uh, I believe it was Erwin Rommel uh, whose car broke down when he was in, in Germany once during the war. And um, they were near a a prisoner of war camp full of some Americans. And um, he went to the German troops and said, anybody of you know how to to fix a car? They all went, no. And he turned to the Americans and he said in English, any of you know how to repair a car? Every single one of these like random American conscripts like put their hand up and he just said, we're not going (laughs) to (laughs) win. This is doomed. (laughs) This is absolutely doomed. I'm reminded there was this old set of um, kind of tactical kind of strategic games called commandos anybody ever play those i want to say there was an engineer in that that's a kind of world they're, they're great world war ii games if you ever play those i don't know if they work on modern systems now like commandos commandos 2 uh I remember there was a there was a sapper and one of them was an engineer uh kind of reminds me of that as well uh, mm. all right let's carry let's carry on um uh in the interest of we're not going to get make it to the british at this point uh pharaoh we're always too slow too much talk of wrestling in the first hour. Um, this man is your friend. 
English man. <laughs> There's been a lot of memes in this one already. Just... <laughs> That's amazing. This man is love, your friend. I love the teeth. He's got the English teeth, of course. Uh, this is an embodiment of uh, friend-enemy distinction here, though. <laughs> yeah. Look. This is, an entire, is. this is an entire. There's an entire series on this, I think, as well. I think there's a Scotsman and, and a Welshman too. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> I mean, the, to to be fair, um, again, I'm just sort of making a, a guess here, but there was quite a bit of enmity between Britain and America before the war, um, and the the Americans even had. I think it was called War Plan Red, um, which was the operation for basically taking down the entire uh, British Empire in sort of one strike. Uh, if they had to go to war with Britain for whatever reason, so it's uh, it's it's possible that it was it, they did actually need to say to the American people, uh, yeah, you know, look, uh, the English are on our side, you know, don't don't uh, don't don't fight them. I mean, we, this is the weird th- right. The weirdest thing about history is that once it happens, people have a habit of thinking that things were inevitable. Um, the collapse of the British Empire was not inevitable, and many, many different choices could have been made at different times. Different people could have been put in, you know, the ideas they had, like, they basically just decided, right, we're going to give, you know, we're going to give up everything for this. <laughs> we're going to get, we're, we're going to go down this trajectory and uh, nothing's going to stop us, basically. They didn't have to do it. Um, and it, it, especially when they were in a position of strength uh, um, a little bit before this, uh, history could have gone differently. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting the way it the way it went. Um, mm. Just on the on the private chat, I've sent across some more of this type. If you want to have a quick, a real quick look, because it's the same idea, but uh, there's some quite funny ones. So I'm just going to uh, switch up my tab. This Welshman is your friend. I couldn't find a Welshman, unfortunately. Oh well. <laughs> It's probably not not worth the effort to explain to Americans what Wales is. is it, you know, this man is your friend. He fights for freedom. <laughs> Ethiopian <laughs> with a <the> trumpet. <laughs> that's quite that's uh, quite cool. That one, I like that one. Hilarious. Uh, Surprisingly he, included Ethiopia. Did you get the first one? That's my favourite. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Uh, hold on a minute. I have to switch the tab again. <laughs> um, this man is your friend, Canadian. He <laughs> fights for freedom. Is that the one you had in mind? <laughs> no, it was, the, it, was, it was the Dutch guy, actually, but uh, that's still pretty good. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah, he's even better. Uh, let's have a look. This man is your friend, Dutch sailor. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh imagine, just imagine the whole of the Dutch people being represented by this, this is, sl- slightly rotund, gawky eyed oh, sailor. If anybody's on Twitter, I want people to relentlessly spam Mr. D with that. <laughs> this man is your friend, Dutch sailor. <laughs> Any Dutchman in chat, tell us if this is accurate or not. Oh, I, I might do it right now. I can't, I can't help myself. Oh, is, damn it. Uh, Jan de Witt there? I think he's Dutch, isn't he? So, uh, so, so, yeah. Um, let's uh, let's get back to the to the main. Uh, so, what awesome set of uh, that's probably my favourite bit of propaganda. <laughs> it's a, it's in all a great, it's a great campaign. It's a great campaign. This man is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this has to be kind of uh, tongue in cheek, though, doesn't it? You know, it, it, like I, this this can't be a hundred percent sincere, can it? Well, I, I'm not sure. Have you, have you seen the World War II um, like videos of like going around an English pub to introduce Americans to yeah. what English pubs are like and stuff? Yeah, Those are really them. interesting. And it's kind of like, oh, here's here's, here's the dartboard, or here's how you yeah. should be you, know, you should be polite to people, and here's how you buy a round for everyone and stuff. They it's very it's very endearing. Yeah, the, the, yeah, very very sort of well 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 shot uh, little films, aren't they? <laughs> They drink their beer at room temperature. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I definitely mm. recommend if you just search for uh, World War Two English pub, American or whatever. I think it will come up. So I, I had to do that. It was uh, too too good an opportunity not to live tweets, not to spam D with uh, sailor memes. Um, 
Okay, have I gone off too, too yeah. far? Too yeah. Far? We're not, we're not going to get to Britain, <laughs> are we? Let's face it, we're not going to get to too I've much. I've been trying to edit it as well as we go. This is the edited version. The Americans did, did a lot a lot more posters this this time. So, okay, uh, that that is amazing, though I have to say. Uh, favorites four four mm, favorites. Yeah. So this is where the, the the comic books came in. Oh look, <laughs> War Bond, <laughs> War Bond, literally punching Hitler. It's literally the classic character War Bond. <laughs> I can't believe they made really him a comic easy. book superhero War Bond. And look, look at the, the Japanese look, down at, there. look at the Japanese. Uh, what's his glasses. name? That uh, that that guy to Tojo. Uh, to yeah, the the prime minister um, Hideki Tojo. Um, I also the 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 song they're singing um, is an actual wartime song uh, by I think I think was it, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He was like a, a wartime comedian called Spike something. Um, and uh, he 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 sang a song called "In in 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 the Fuhrer's Face." Right, which I think the is the and, and look, there's Mussolini in the back as well. Mm -hmm. Isn't that Mussolini? That's Mussolini, unshaven, slovenly Mussolini. And uh, there you go. I kind of limp wristed. They've made uh, the Fuhrer, <laughs> and he's wearing. They've made his outfit almost pink. You know, again, all of their colours. There's mauve, pink, and green. It's like ridiculous uh, outfits. But no, so all, all, all Bond is the most. Cursed comic book character ever created, I think. War Bond. Mm. They should bring him back to fight the <laughs> pandemic. I'm surprised uh, Capcom haven't uh, squeezed squeezed him into a game somehow. Yeah, I mean, War Bond would be a great uh, pay DLC for Street Fighter V, <laughs> wouldn't it? Uh, Just to talk about the poster, like I, I really don't like it. I, I, I like I've never really liked comic books and like or this style of comic book at least it's just it just grates me like it's too it's just too daft you know <laughs> like it's it's so absurd i just i just you know zero out of ten so so there we go um uh when you ride alone you ride with hitler join a cab share a car sharing club today Oh my gosh! Uh, I, I just love Ghost Hitler. He's just hanging yeah. out. He's just having a ride with this guy. You ride with Hitler. <laughs> they should bring this back to de-radicalize the youth. Or all, all those, all those, uh, you know, all those horrible YouTubers who have done this to you. You know, when you watch YouTube, you ride with Hitler. You should have that. You should have like, uh, you know. There's you watching Way of the World or something that's been banned, and then you ride with Hitler. They, they could bring it back, couldn't they? Um, because, so. I mean, let's face it, all the propaganda is still based on this basic idea, uh, yeah. as we've been the, talking about throughout the, the, the stream. Problem, the problem with this one is that the guy driving alone, he just looks like an absolute gent. He's in the great car, it's convertible. Look at the dapper hat and the great suit. No, you know, you. Even Hitler's having a great time. I, you know, this, this poster certainly doesn't work for me. I it's think. Like, it, it's like, of course, Hitler would ride with this guy. He's uh, he's changing the gears for him, like uh, Mark uh, changes the gears for Johnson. In Beep show. There you go. I mean, it's um, it's it's kind of like uh, this would probably have more of an impact during the time it was set. This idea that you know Hitler is so monstrous that he can't really be a figure of fun, you know, during the, in 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 the forties themselves, and then you know this you know this this is you in your car, you know, think thinking that you're so cool, and look look who's look who's look who's next to you, you know. I feel I feel like they always make him quite camp. Even this Hitler's a bit kind of yeah. Why is he sitting in such a girlish manner? You know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so, the, uh, the, I, as much as it may annoy some people in the chat, I would say that you know Hit, Hitler was a bit clownish. You know, but let's let's let, let, let's be real. <laughs> it's pro the, the, what I like about the characters of him is that very very often they're more understated than you'd expect because he kind of was this. What do the people in the chat? Is if there, there are no Hitler fans in the chat? You, well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> if you're a Hitler fan, what are you doing? We're, we're um, classical liberals here, don't you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you're going to you're gonna get a visit from War Bond. He's going to come around and show you a yeah, lesson. Yeah, War Bond will... War Bond will uh, <laughs> this, this guy's thinking, cool, I'm well-dressed. Uh, I've got it together. Well, I, of course I'd be, uh, you know, for the fash, this guy's thinking. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's carry on. Um, Americans will always fight for liberty. 
1978-1943. There we go. There they are, fighting for liberty. Yeah, I just put this in the context of, uh, I know, the 6th of, what was it, February or whatever. You know. So, uh, so, there, so there we go. Um, I like I like the um the invocation of winter there. The fact they're all in their their um overcoats and and there's sort of a cold breeze blowing. You know, that's uh that's quite a nice touch. I think it gives it a bit more power. This idea that you know they're they're sort of sort of hard men. You know, ready to to march off and and do tough things for the cause. It's a it's a it's a very. I'd say that's that's a good poster. I like that one. So, so let's carry on. Uh, the guy who relaxes is always hopping the axis. <laughs> Just love this. It's a quality pun. And then zoom in on the axis. Look who it is. <laughs> there he is. Oh, oh no. The boxing <laughs> snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like the idea of weaponizing this as a meme. <laughs> I don't know why I want to pick on D today, but I want to make this look like, <laughs> Uh, obviously, I won't. Uh, I won't send that one to him. But um, yes, very good. I like. I like. I, f I feel like they've got different uh, propaganda teams, Pharaoh, and this whoever's on this squad is pumping out quality, <laughs> quality uh, anti-axis uh, propaganda. Yeah. The guy who relaxes is help is helping the axis. So, uh, <laughs> Our good earth, keep it ours, buy war bonds, every oh. make every market day bond day. Sick of it. Sick well, of I, th it. I think this is interesting because you should well, like keep this in your mind when you compare it to the German ones because there is no difference oh. between that okay. and the um, a, a lot of the fam a, family orientated German. It's a bit Aryan looking, isn't it? It's exactly. Yeah, it's like it's like literally blood and blood and soil, isn't it? It's the kind of. Um... Chad meme, isn't it? This, 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 this is you. This is you. You are the farmer, and this is what you look like. You know, it doesn't matter what what you actually look like. This is this is you. Um, it's also a bit uh, Theresa May pilled. <laughs> Do you remember when oh, she had a? Come on, <laughs> eh? when... in the weeds. Do you not remember that? She went on. on uh, she on. went on the one show, and they said, "Oh." Mm. Can you tell us something a bit naughty about yourself? She's like, sometimes I imagine myself running through a wheat field, and that was her <laughs> attempt to be more human. <laughs> great, great, great lost prime minister, one of one of the all time greats, Theresa May. Um, X, oh, here we go. X marks the spot. Keep them firing. So there we go. Um. <laughs> bit what, rubs in it it's a bit childish what, what, what can we really say about this one you know it's pretty straightforward um army united states army air forces over the ramparts we watch yeah so i i really like this one again just iconography again you've got this kind of tr tremendous like superman appearing from the clouds and just like the again, he sort of represents both the aircraft and also the men in, inside them. He's looking off into the distance, but up as well. So it's kind of like looking towards the target, looking looking towards the heavens. I mean, he's literally carrying a huge bomb in his hands, which is quite quite badass. And then you've got the kind of the the the, the uh, detachment of bombers going in for their for their mission. So I think it's a really I really like the, the layout. And then again. Uh, you know, over the ramparts we watch again, it's kind of like uh, harking back to, um, you know, tr tradition and uh, like older, uh, older generations that would kind of guard. No, no, I, I, hate, I hate to be all Freudian, but it's a bit phallic, isn't it? It's like he's, um, is he not holding that bomb as if it's his? <laughs> I mean, no? I guess Freud would say that it's, it's isn't it? It doesn't reflect the uh, person he's looking at it. Yeah, it looks very again. A lot, a lot of these look very modern because, of course, the colours, because of how you know photorealistic they are. But you know that, that that could easily be something from thirty, forty, fifty years later, just because it you know you don't associate this period with people being in full colour all the time, do you? Um, no. Kind of interesting that again, the Alex Ross style as well. Um, telling a friend may mean telling the enemy. 
So this is this is another kind of careless talk, and basically it's it's showing four four different scenes: a soldier telling his girlfriend, his girlfriend's telling this other woman, a woman telling another woman, and then it's going to the, the enemy. But I really like the layout of it. Can you see it's it's if you just look at the colours, it's red, white, white, red. So it's almost like a alarm checkerboard p- pattern. You've got telling, and then the enemy in full caps there. So again, this the idea is. Careless talk is effectively telling the enemy. I love that the, um, the there's there is like the the wholesome woman in the top left. He's like the blonde haired yeah. and smiley, but then there's evil Nazi woman. He's kind of black haired with like a, a choker or whatever. Eyes like closed, a, a untrustworthy eyes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, deceitful, deceitful, deceitful mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, but then look at the, look at the friend. <laughs> the ditzy, look at the gossip. Yeah. The yeah. gossip, exactly. Again, I'd, I'd love to utilize these memes. Love to utilize these memes somehow. Mm-hmm. I like also I like, I, like, I like the implication that the entire sort of chain of, of intelligence is, is broken down by women, <laughs> women <laughs> gossiping. <laughs> it's all women. Uh, yeah. Um, so there we go. This is the, look at the enemy though. The enemy is quite a chat. Yeah. He's. I think it's meant to show that like you know the enemy is powerful. And they're, they're like because you've got the kind of angle of them being this kind of buck tooth japs and and sort of stupid yeah. fat uh teutons but then you've got the, this guy who's sort of he's a bit of a threat you know he's sort of he's he's like cool looking and, and chad you know he's sort of like you know you don't want you don't want this guy to this this sort of uh competent enemy to know all your stuff you know what's one of the things i i think about the press sometimes though is like why are they the press always demand to know everything all the time. It's like the enemy can read, can read, read the newspaper. So mm-hmm. I don't really understand that um, element of things. Um, and uh, it does does happen sometimes when, especially um, especially during the Trump era when they weren't on, when they weren't really playing ball with the, with the power. It's like, well, you're just you're just strengthening the hand of the enemy all the time. Um, Anyway, let's uh, let's carry on. Um, save waste fats for explosives. Take them to your meat dealer. <laughs> what? But yes, yeah, so, so basically, people would uh, save and keep up all of their fats because it's used for uh, you know you can turn it to an explosives. You know, like in Fight Club, they take the uh, the, the fat from liposuctions and turn it into soap and uh, explosives for Project Mayhem. But anyway, what I thought was interesting here is if you look at the hand. Um, you can see that it's, uh, I think it's an African-American hand. So again, it's kind of trying to appeal to that specific target audience of basically... Sure? That's pretty subtle. That's pretty subtle, Pharaoh. Um, okay, well, I, I just wanted to, because again, all, all I'm saying is that maybe the, the type of food they're cooking could have a large amount of like fats in. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. You have a point there, actually. Yeah, it, you know. Um, but then I'll... Frying a certain type of poultry. <laughs> I didn't want to say, <laughs> but um, you can see. I, I like how you you could have literally pouring and turning that fat into a, this huge explosion where bombs are coming out of. So again, I think in terms of imagery, it's very dramatic and cool. I like the idea that everybody's got a meat dealer. I my mind's automatically taken to uh, the gentleman, you know, the special stuff, <laughs> the, the meat mm. local meat dealer. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. Um, Oh my gosh! Uh, stop this monster that stops at nothing. Produced to your limit. This is your war. The re- <laughs> what I love is the, the wrench again. Americans do, do not give Americans a wrench. That's their uh, yeah. true true a wrench of production. Uh, and if anybody's ever played Civilization to the late game, you know how important those spanners are. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> and look at the look at the two headed beast here. The vicious uh, japanese and the evil germans there they are so um yes very kind of they punk. may have a grip on the statue of liberty and a dagger in their hand but you've got the spanner of production it's your war so, effective so i think we... it's effective was it really your war though uh let's carry on 10 years ago the nazis burned these books but free Americans can still read them. Well, can we get a reading list? Uh, what was the what were the books that were burned? Uh, well, well, again, this this was interesting because it was all, you know, 
I, I, I mean, maybe you could have re- re- read them, but they weren't exactly uh, common books, were they? They were. They were. They were. Uh, yes, books are interesting books. But uh, it, it's funny. I, this isn't something else that um, that uh, I keep on coming across in the in in the history that I've been reading. Um, is the sheer amount of books that have been banned by the U.S. government over the years? Oh, yeah. um, they are seemingly the biggest burners of books. Um, I mean, one book I one book uh, I've been looking at recently because you know you know I did the, the stream on Yoki a few weeks ago. Um, he wrote another book called "The Enemy of Europe." Every single copy of that book was was destroyed and burned. Um, and there are, you know, FBI records of, you know, the confiscation, seizure, and destruction of, you know, every known copy of this of this book. Um, they didn't manage to get them all clearly because we we still have it today. Um, it had to be translated into German and then back out of German again, I think. Um, but um, the the fact of the matter is is that they have always engaged in intense censorship of things they don't like. So this meme of the Nazis burning books is kind of interesting because it never seems to apply. You know, I mean, we're talking in a week where we've seen we've seen Amazon delist hundreds of books, right, on uh, on Amazon this week, books that are no longer available, books that you could have bought a week ago now. No, there was one about uh, the trans issue, I seem to remember. It was like a number one bestseller, and now you can't buy it anymore. They've delisted it. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting how um, there are two sides to this uh, story of the book burning. But uh, yes, um, I wonder if anybody did uh, inquire. Like, what, what were the books? Uh, this is the enemy. Pretty good piece of propaganda, I think. Yeah, I quite, I quite like that as well. So again, again, it's it's interesting because you don't see that many appeals to religion, um, but obviously. Um, yeah, they, and again, I, I just like the uh, the background is this kind of uh, almost hell like um, red. The, the dagger has got this blue tint to it as well, and then there's like the yellow of the Bible. So they're they're kind of mixing the colours really really well. There's some strong um, typography at the bottom. This is the enemy. Simple but effective. Yeah, I think it's pretty it's pretty good one. Uh, pretty good. Do you like that one, Panama? Um, yes, I th- I think it's, I think it's, um, very, uh, like this, this probably caused quite a lot of controversy when it came out, I would imagine, um, because the, the implication there, um, and obviously, you know, America famously kind of, you know, uh, deeply, uh, Christian, uh, in a kind of Protestant way. So yes, I think, I think that. Given given the time and the place and everything, it's a very good poster. They're just trying to hit every angle, see, like yeah. you know, trying to appeal to any emotion that anybody has in any area to get them on board with this war. Uh, so let's carry on. Your victory garden counts more than ever. So there we go, more kind of based and cabbage pilled for you, uh, Panama. Um, I kind of like this one a bit more than the other one. I don't know why. Yes, it's the the kind of the 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 veg is almost kind of flying through the air, isn't it? I think there's something abstract about it and uh, a little bit more uh, interesting than just like a box of a veg. Uh, also, I, you you can almost see. I know it's it's kind of laid out in a very weird way. Like, why is that? Why is there a gigantic pea pod right in the center? It's not. <laughs> it's not like accurate in Again, terms of size one, isn't it so one can't help but 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 notice the kind of phallic imagery um of the of the giant <laughs> pea pod like that it's uh it's it's it does seem rather too c- much of a coincidence um to, to just be innocent i don't know so we'll carry on um <laughs> uh he volunteered for submarine oh, service God. So again, the the classic America Coon poster comes out again. Do you remember the First World War? It was like women swooning over your service, and again, it's yeah. even more explicit here, where you've literally got a woman draped over you because you're volunteering for submarines. 
I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty weird after like a load of posters saying don't touch women, they all have you know VD, and and they'll they'll tell the enemy all your secrets, and then it's like, look, if you if if you if you join the submarine corps, then you'll have women all over you. Yeah, I mean, again, it's like different campaigns hitting different things at different times. Um, I think probably those ones that were produced don't blab type of thing is probably because there was a genuine problem with people telling their wives stuff and, you know, it somehow, like, they probably had a genuine issue that had cropped up during the war, I'd imagine, for those uh, for those later ones to be produced. Watch this. So this is this is Rosie the Riveter, so it's quite a famous uh, image, and again, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you can see this is one of those powerful, empowered women. You can see she's got her lunchbox and she's, uh, you know, got the words Rosie on it. And that's a, there's a riveting gun, so you can rivet plates together. So again, it's it's quite clever in the fact that it doesn't have to say anything at all. It's just like this, you know, this woman in in uh, overall. You, again, the way that she's eating the sandwich is kind of reflecting that kind of strong woman that we saw before. Uh, you got well, she's built like a man. Let's just not beat around the bush. She's got arms like a man. Women oh, yeah. don't have arms like this. She's, so got, this a, she's got the hips, hips of a woman there as well. Like I, I think yeah. they have tried to add, add in some femininity into it. But you're, you're, you're right. And again, it's just kind of butch. So that's the trouble. Yeah, I, I think she, yeah, she's she's like a feminist icon or whatever now, isn't she? Still, so. So there we go. Um, Zero out of ten. Don't even try. She may be a spy. So here's more of this. <laughs> this is like this is the Bob. This is the original Bobbers meme. Basically, this is. I just, I just hate. I think this got the most cursed, uh, like drawing of people. Like, look at the guy's arm. It's this. this yeah, he's angle. a very strange character. He's a, again, you know. Is this if this is meant to be you though? It's like what? So, yeah, there we go. Uh, someone talked. It was him. U.S. ship, U.S. <laughs> ship sunk by this guy. <laughs> this guy. So, um, yeah, I mean, they must have had a real problem with uh with info at, mm. at that time. Uh, and is that the very last one? That that is, yeah. One. So we're going to have to leave uh, Britain for next time. I think uh, you know uh, whether it's next week or two weeks or whenever we do the next one, uh, we'll have to be do Britain. Um, clearly, these propaganda posters take a long time to get through. But let's uh, let's hit the super chats. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think of what the best one was before we before we. Uh, what was your What was your favorite one, Panama? What one sticks uh, out? To you? It was the uh, you know uh, come and wipe out the murdering Japs. <laughs> that was <laughs> that's such a that's such a raw piece of, uh, of, of propaganda. Absolutely, my favorite of the entire thing so far. What what about you, uh, Pharaoh? Yeah, look, I, I think you made a really good point. These these are different posters for different campaigns and different purposes. But I think that the the most effective in my eyes were some of those kind of heroic ones, like the the, the guts and metal one, where again it's got that dual purpose of showing the kind of heroism of the troops, but also that strong call to it. Yeah, this this one was definitely yeah. Uh, so that that was your period. pick. This was Panama's pick. Mm -hmm. This was yours, Pharaoh, yeah. or yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think. Uh, I kind of like this character. <laughs> so I mean, any, like, anything yeah. with a snake on them, you know. Hats off to the, uh, um, yeah, the designers. I mean, and this, is this, well. this, yeah. this is a classic. So. This man is your friend. He fights for <laughs> right. I, I think the I like that campaign. I quite like this one as well, though, for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, I, this one was quite good. Yeah, but just in terms of like layout and telling a story, and again getting people's attention is really good. I think. I want to meme it. I want to make like this saffron. This one here. <laughs> this uh, you know, various people blabbing. You know. Um. You do it with tweets, so, though. I can't. I can't think of two other women in, in the <laughs> audience. They, they are around. There's that Laura I can see in the chat. She could be one of them. 
Um, yeah. All right, let's carry on. Uh, save waste fats. Um, no, if it's the um, it's the friend one for me. I quite like this one though. Someone talk, <laughs> this guy, you know. All right, I said the super chats. Uh, f- for me, it was the the friend one. Uh, this man is your friend. Um, Englishman. He is the eunuch in entropy. Says, check your Twitter mentions for a laugh. Safe for stream viewing. Also, none of the leaders of World War II era are worthy of praise. They all failed us in the Bolsheviks one. Uh, so I will just check my Twitter notifications. I will decide if this is safe. Oh, yes. Here we go. Some excellent memes already. You seen this? This man is your friend. He removes midwits. So there we go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Brilliant. Yeah, I like that. I that. Not bad, is it? Fantastic. Uh, so, so there we go. And uh, the old Bucky, as uh, I can see, the uh, the old snake has been taken out. Uh, oh, um, apparently the Dutch sailor is not coming out for some people. Twitter has decided that meme, that tweet I sent John D is not safe, and it's coming out just as just like this. Let me just show you how it's coming out for people. What? So, Interesting. So that's, that's... You, you know what it is. This is probably like the D- Dutchies absolutely furious yeah. at yeah, being d- some d- uh, depicted. This man is your friend. <laughs> I should say, like he 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 fights for order and and timeliness. Yeah, he f- yeah. fights against confusion and delay. Uh, indeed. Uh, so so that, so there we go. Someone caught. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> These are some excellent, uh, excellent efforts from years here. Um, there we go. You have caused confusion and delay. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's uh, let's carry on. Um, years also. Oh, Jacob has said, Uncle Sam may be named after Samuel Wilson, but his persona and outfit are taken from Brother J- Jonathan, the avatar of the most vile corner of the planet, New England. So there we go. And here's the eunuch says, I forgot I can put links in entropy chat. Top two posts are on my feed are memes for today. They're safe to show on stream. So there we go. Uh, yes, thank you very much for that, Liz. Uh, yes. And now heading over to the uh, to the other super chats. Um, see what we got in here. Uh, Jedi Knight Anakin Cringe Walker says the Romans thought even numbers were unlucky, so they picked February to be the unlucky month. Their months also only had 31 or 29 days. 30 is new. So there we go. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? It was Roman superstition that made February 28. That's pretty good. Chris Lutio says, AA, if the tank engines are bought and are the property of the fat controller, Aren't we then watching slavery in action? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not a slavery situation. They're it's trains. The, the natural hierarchy. <laughs> They're the trains. Serfs. Uh, the serfs. Um, Austrian school Swift says. You have completely forgotten the amazing victories in the Burma campaign. Uh, they voted the most famous baton in UK history was in that campaign at Impal. Impal. Oh, yes. Now, um, uh, now, w- one thing I will say is that um, the East... So I know um, people in Mrs. AA's family, like, many of them were posted in like Singapore, Hong Kong. Like th- there, was, there was a whole front... Eastern Front of the of World War Two, where people people were posted and so on, that very few people ever talk about, and yet there were lots of people involved. In it. Well, the, it, the the trouble the trouble is with that campaign is, of course, sadly, um, it's remembered as being sort of like a, a sideshow because it was essentially trying to defend 
uh, India from a Japanese invasion. Uh, and it, it wasn't considered to be as war winning as the campaign to sort of take, uh, you know, take Europe or, or Africa or even, you know, uh, bomb um, Japan. So it does have that kind of, uh, uh, you know, third third man relegation, um, unfortunately. But I would I would say it's a it's an absolutely brilliant um, campaign to read about. And uh, again, you know, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not trying to get into the whole World War Two myth. You know, you know, or weren't weren't, weren't the enemy so evil? But um, I would recommend reading Eric Lomax's The Railway Man just for a a, a very very harrowing account of uh, being a prisoner of war um, under the Japanese because you know it just it was objectively horrible you know I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to sit for either side yeah um somebody suggested in the normal chat to get a reading of banned books i'd be interested to get to pick up uh to pick up some of the ones that the nazis burned to see what they were about because that was literally being boasted at boasted about in world war Two propaganda but like what were the books that were? Is there has anyone ever made a list of yeah, the books that were burned by the Nazis? I, I heard there's lots of like lots of stuff around like transgenderism and psychology and stuff like that that was that was burned. Basically, a lot a lot of those kind of early understandings of, uh, you know, like basically early gender studies books and stuff like that. <laughs> and also, <laughs> well, I know, you should, but again, it, it's not like they were kind of like mainstream books from my understanding, but um. That's just what I heard. So, uh, okay, not Nazi burning book campaign list. What were the books that were banned? What were the books that were burned? Books banned by the Nazis. Seventy books. All quiet on the Western Front. The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Bambi. <laughs> They banned Bambi. They banned Bambi. <laughs> I, I, th I thought Hitler was meant to be a big Disney, Disney fan. I was led to believe was, from his, uh, yeah, from his depiction of uh, H. G. Wells, Daisy. the Time Machine, and the War of the Worlds. <laughs> Frederick Engels, the condition of the working class in England. Does it? Say, just, so, sorry, is does, this does true? It, does it say why they banned some of these things? Why, no, why did they so ban Bambi? Is. White what Fang is... by Jack London. What's Why? the source? What's the source of this? Goodreads. Okay, yeah, no. It doesn't I'm sound not... true. Why would no. they find White Fang and, and Bambi and all these sort of... I don't I thought it was going to be like, uh, you know, all these books written by sort of Jewish uh, the theoreticians or something, or, you know, just like straight up leftist stuff, you know. Albert Einstein's <laughs> theory of relativity was banned by the Nazis. What? Sigmund Freud's The Interpretation of Dreams. Well, that's the good. basic I, I writings of Sigma. These books weren't bad. I, 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 I'm, I'm the, dubious the, of this. Uh, the the Freud ones were banned. I'm, I'm sure because again, I, I, I heard that a lot of psychology these, and stuff. Are like these this is books? Considered... Are these books that were banned or books that they encouraged people to burn? Because I, I know, know that there, there, like there were books you could own, but that you were just encouraged not to read. Basically, um, apparently, all, all, uh, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World was banned, uh, which is. Ironic, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. How to become a socialist by Helen Keller was banned by Hitler. Magnus. I mean, that just sounds cringe. However, the book burnings that we know about were actually organised by the German Student Union <laughs> in 1933. On the sixth of May, 1933, the German Student Union organised an attack. On Magnus Hirschfeld's Institute of Sex Research. Yes, that's the yeah. library and archives, including about 20,000 books and journals, were hauled out publicly. And so it the, was, yeah. That, that, the stuff that's in there, again, it's just the stuff we're living through today. So students mm, never change. Well, well, no, no, but what I'm saying is that the, the, those, the initial, the, the, the books in that library were not good books. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't really get a. I can't really get a decent uh, list of the books that were burned. Um, I think because it was just kind of like whatever was in that library, you know. Yeah. So, so who but knows? Look, but, they were just... but, but, I'm just trying to think where I, where I was. List... There was an entire like show or documentary that I've seen about it. I'll see if I can remember and send it on Twitter later. The, so. the, the, the thing is, though, is that 
it wasn't as it wasn't as if Hitler kind of ordered them to go and do it. They did it spontaneously, you know. Yeah. Much like the students today, you know, do this sort of stuff. It was a kind of a spontane, you know. It was a, it was not a at gunpoint type thing. It was done by students. So that's something that I think is commonly not understood about, uh, you know, in the in the popular mythos. It's as if he ordered it, but it was actually done by. Uh, done by you know a bunch of sjw's mm-hmm. <laughs> nazi sjw's um yeah i can see uh einstein and sigma freud were part of that collection apparently so that's where they that's where some of these come from but we don't really have many detailed lists it's the same few books coming up again and again um so there's a there's a bit of a lack of detail there. I, I, I think this I think this whole article has been astroturf. They probably just found like what were the most popular books that maybe accidentally got booked as part burnt as part of the library, and then have said, oh look, yeah, they've burned Bambi, or oh, they've burned H.G. Wells. Like I'm sure that no one really cared either way about H.G. Wells, and they were, they were burning it for other reasons, and they, they just burnt burnt a lot. But I, 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 just, I can't I would, find that. Yeah, I, I would not trust that source. List. No, I want I want people who are into this to find me that list that it must exist and if it doesn't exist i want to know why given how famous they are surely i mean the nazis were incredibly anal about everything they they didn't make a list of course you, you, of course they made a list you're on the, the, the list that's what they're they famous must have for. made a list <laughs> well, so, uh, speaking about that yeah. we, um panama was thinking of uh, was posting the idea of maybe doing a stream on my channel about um, the art of Hitler, but also like what 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 art did he have for his personal collection versus what did he ban and show publicly? Because again, I think there's an interesting um, difference between his personal taste versus what he projected at, um, for the country as well. Yeah, it, you know what's quite funny? Somebody's mentioned Lady Chatterley's lover in the uh, in the chat. Um, I can't remember which which book it is, but Peter Hitchens has a rant about. Lady Chatley's lover as being like the beginning of the end, like it yeah. should have been, should have been main, that ban should have been maintained. Uh, Hitchens, Hitchens says somewhere, um, which is one of his more reactionary views, I would say. It's also just um, a really mediocre book. I was, I was quite, I was quite sort of upset when I when I got a copy of it at like um, sort of fif, fif, fifteen and cracked it open, and then it was just really dull and quite quite mediocre. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember where it is that Hitchens makes that argument. But uh, you know, occasionally he adopts positions that are just off the off the map reactionary. Because um, uh, I mean, I'm not even sure that Hitler and his friends would have banned Lady Chatley's Lover. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, I think he. Um, I think he he laments it as a kind of got us down the gateway of thinking like you know of this kind of cheap scandalism type stuff i mean i can see there's a whole interview on it peter hitchens on lady chatley's lover in the 60s so there we go it's like a 40 minute interview so uh you can check out that in your own time um let's carry on uh chris Dutio says aa what are the strengths and weaknesses of the cathedral um pretty broad uh, question there's a bit much to get into now but um i mean the strengths of the cathedral are its ability its its ability to coordinate action without actually coordinating it um its uh ability to control information its ability to brainwash millions of people i mean these are all strengths of the cathedral right um its weaknesses is that its weaknesses is that it does seem to lack self-awareness a lot of the time. It doesn't seem to, uh, it, especially recently, the cathedral seems a lot more bristled than it used to be. It used to be a lot more kind of robust and anti. It feels very fragile and weak to me at the moment. Um, its, it's weakness is the people that it has. Yeah, well, exactly. It rests on, it rests on um, these kind of traditionally elite nodes of power right and um i think a lot of its problems come from the fact that the people who have their hands on those levers today are not 
of the same caliber of uh, you know the people who were controlling the propaganda back in World War Two, for example. Um, I mean, I've talked about Edward Bernays before. I don't know if he was involved in World War Two efforts, uh, Pharaoh. I'd be surprised if he wasn't in some in some mm-hmm. way. But um, you know, there's a there's a long way between him and like your typical Vox journalist today. You know, mm-hmm. um, not a scholar says just want to shell Pharaoh's channel. He has good content and the voice of an 18 year old. List more and offer fresh translations of Danish symbolists. <laughs> so, th- so there we go. Thank you. Not a scholar says that. Uh, Chris Lutio says, and that, that his channel is in the show notes. I think I I link it. Do I not? Yes, you do, sir. Uh, Chris Lutio says, AA, why not have 13 months with 28 days each? Also, why do we have days named after Old Norse gods still? Who designed the system? Who is this, yes, indeed. Who is this filthy rationalist down there? You know, let's 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 re- 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 redesign the the calendar arbitrarily and and, and having you know, ten ten hours in a day or whatever. You know, <laughs> didn't shut up. didn't Cromwell try to redesign the calendar? I feel, I feel like. I don't know about Cromwell, but I know they did in um, France after the revolution. I, I think I think the Puritan. I th- I'm pretty sure. I I seem to remember something about thirteen days being lost or something. There are thirteen days that the Puritans like added on. Can't remember what it was now. Something to do with their distaste of feast days or something. Um, somebody will have to jog my memory there. But there was something. Um, something about the the calendar. Um, and I know that whole period of the interregnum was uh, retconned in some way, um, in the way that the history was recorded as well, due to Puritan interference in the calendar. Um, Anthony Zufarin says, tell someone 100 times you are a dog, and on the 101st, that person will bark. One of the basic lessons taught in any worthwhile propaganda school. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, I need to review it before we try to share it on a, on a stream, Pharaoh. But um, there is an interview with one of Goebbels's propaganda kind of minions, um, mm. like, like a half hour thing yeah. that we might review what's like during the World War II section just to see what their philosophy and insights were. I think that's kind of in- interesting. But, you know, would you be up for that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um. Utis4321 says, growing up in America and German camps are the main point of remembrance of World War II. One HS year, we had four different classes that had a German camp section. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's deeply embedded in all p- sorts of ways. Um, I mean, I, I remember somebody did a project on um, how Shakespeare is taught and how, r- how race in Shakespeare is approached by the national curriculum in this country. And it's kind of interesting because the two the two big plays are Othello, of course, and um and Merchant of Venice. And race talk in Othello is played down by the curriculum, believe it or not. Um and other aspects of the play are talked up. Whereas in Merchant of Venice, um it's kind of pushed into talking about the Holocaust, which is kind of a bit of a strange back, you know, strange way of getting around to that topic, right? Um, within the confines of uh, English literature, but it's almost unavoidable in the education system. I mean, we did the, I did history GCSE earning level. And I mean, I feel like we did the Nazis like five times or something. Um, what about you guys in your education? How many times did you do this period of history? Just GCC history for me. Weirdly enough, um, we kind of we had this weird thing where we learned from sort of primary school up to GCSE, kind of from the Celts all the way up to the First World War, and then we skipped the actual First World War and then spent about three years doing Versailles and and the, the Depression and learning about how you know Her- Herbert Hoover was a. Um, a, a laissez-faire ad advocate and then FDR came and fixed everything weirdly so I, I think maybe that's that's when the pos stuff really came in uh, you know it was r- right around that time for me I don't know uh, years has uh, 
Yiz has sent me another meme on my entropy, which I, I, I'm afraid I cannot share, Yiz. Um, <laughs> too spicy, I think. Um, you, you just just don't mind says, please do a Bob Dylan subterranean homesick blue stream AA. Put a critical lens on his lyrics, a mirror for hypocrisy of our era, masters of war, etc. Yeah, I mean, I can do a Bob Dylan deepest law. Um, I think it would have to be many streams long, though. I, I, you know, he he's got a very long career with distinct phases, and if I did it, I'd have to do it properly. Uh, DRT is king says I, I'm not against doing it. Um, DRT is king says Uncle Sam was an actual dude, and supposedly the first Uncle Sam poster was based on that dude during the War of 1812, and it has just stuck. Wow, well, what do you know? A bit like Uncle Ben, right? Uncle Ben was a real man. Do you know the story of Uncle Ben, Farrah? No. Um, he, was a, he was a waiter where the marketing execs, uh, you know, went for their lunch, and they liked the look of him. So they said, you know, can we use your image for, you know, to put nice. on our rice and stuck and, until he was cancelled yeah. randomly last year. So, um, M M Mott Fishflake says the Irish diaspora in America has always been Irish anti-English. Of course they have. Irish Americans funded the IRA with millions of dollars. That pro-English propaganda was needed in some communities is not surprising. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and of course, English. You know the English were a traditional enemy for the American regime in general. You know from their from their foundation, if you if you think about it. So, uh, yeah, it's not surprising. Um, cows says this cow is your friend. Well, thank you, cows. Um, Belfarus uh, Knight says, can we get banned books? U.S. versus Germany. I'm curious on what the what the American hates. I probably don't trust any theories from them. I mean, there have been tons and tons of books uh, banned by the Americans over the years. Um, you know, usually ones that are on the other side of things, you know. Um, and Cow says, how much did the Holocaust? Oh, I see what you're doing there. Look, Cows, with your puns. I I see you. I just don't find them funny. All right. Uh, nothing uh, wrong. Uh, anything, anything to mention before we get out of here? Um, we just finished a, uh, our second part of the symbolist analysis on my channel and Panama's there as well. So if, if you're interested in art and, uh, you know, learning about a group of artists you've not may, may not have heard of before, check, check it out. And, uh, this week is another foundations, um, of architecture podcast on Sunday. So tune in at around, uh, eight 30. And. Panama, you got any thing um, to mention? Really, nothing at the moment. Um, I'll upload a video sometime in the next few, probably next week, I would think, um, talking about the errors of democracy. Um, but that's what I really have at the moment. Yeah, how did people get to your? Because I, I wasn't sure if uh, you've got um, any links. So. If I, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link to the channel after the stream and um, we'll put it in the description. Yeah, and the zero care has come in on entropy. With with Dr. Zeus used to make some of the most offensive comics depicting Japanese people. Anti-Japanese sentiments were indeed very popular in progressive and socialist circles well before Pearl Harbor. So uh, there we go. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, so, uh, and, and, and now he's, uh, and now he's being canceled for it, which is a bit odd. I mean, can't they just say, you know, the context of the time it was the war, like, don't really understand this seems to have pushed uh wokery into a whole new realm now where it can't even understand like the context of a war it's bizarre I quite logic it? to it eh? um well indeed yeah it's just just raw power yeah um so uh yeah um you can still buy my courses of course foundations of logic foundations of uh racing foundations of economics um the calculus course is going to be out in a in a couple of days, possibly even out later today or tomorrow. Um, so that's uh, that's another one, and I'm still you know slowly trying to you know get uh, rhetoric done. I'd rather not rush it 
just for the sake of getting it out on it. I'd rather get it right. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, and that is that. Oh, yes, and uh, subscribe to my friend Morkar and AA Gold and join us tomorrow for Cigar Stream. Now get out, everyone. Get out. <laughs>